done. Um, we've got uh, a lot of great things on the agenda today. And before we get started, I thought I would just kind of do a little icebreaker fun thing. Um, now, if you're watching this on Facebook Live, actually, you wouldn't be watching it on Facebook Live because I haven't launched it yet, but I will in a minute. Um, the, uh, we're going to do this little trivia thing. So take a look at your screen, and you should see a quiz here. <laughs> this should be an easy one. If you don't know the answer to this, then we're going to kick you off of our Zoom. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so you see how you just click on uh, the one of the choices there, Jefferson, Washington, Westwood, Irvington, Main Street. That's if you know where our borough hall is. Okay, it looks like we've got five people who've uh, answered that question. If you haven't answered the question yet, I'm gonna give you like 10 more seconds to answer. And everybody's got it right. So, <laughs> Let's see what the results are. Yay, everybody knows it's on Washington Avenue. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to shift over for a second to Facebook Live. And we are going to go in just a moment. Um, let's see. It wants me to type in a title here. And it's still not letting me go live. So, all right, well, that did not work. So let me try something else here. And while we're doing that, I'm going to do another poll to let you guys do that while I figure out how to go live here. And it's going to be, let's see. Let's do a new one. So that's the one we just did, right? Yeah. Okay. Let me pull out a new one here. And we should. Oh, here we go. So here's another one. Let's see if you know the answers to this. Okay. Everybody see that? Yep. Okay. And now I'm just switching over to do our Facebook Live here um, on Westwood for All Ages. It's preparing. Okay, so I'm just putting in a title. Bear with me one moment. So everybody, it looks like Oh, I'll yeah. know the answer to where the Westwood Heritage Society Historic Museum is <laughs> located. So while, um, so so Roseanne, while we're kind of waiting to figure out here why this is not letting me do it without the titles, um, why don't you go ahead and talk about the arts on the avenue, and then we're going to introduce Dr. German. Great. So um, as everybody probably knows, I. Um, also work with the Celebrate Westwood group and last year we worked on the 125th anniversary. This year we're doing something different. We're bringing arts to the avenues. Tonight we are kicking off with um, some live entertainment um, in uh, downtown Westwood. Um, across the, the parking lot across from where Hanami is, there's a little bit of an open space and um, we will have a uh, performer there whose name is Liv Lyons and um, she's a local youngster uh, musician, pianist, um, original songwriter. So we're super excited to be launching that. We'll have um, music downtown in different locations on the Celebrate Westwood Facebook page. You'll, you can see a map 
Um, and you also see our schedule of where those performances will be held. It's not just um, music, there'll be some uh, live um, art making and some dancing um, as the weeks progress. And um, we're very happy to announce that Westwood for All Ages is helping us bring larger acts um, <laughs> later in the summer uh, through some funding <laughs> that they have been able to give us a sponsorship. So we're very excited about that. So if you're out tonight, dining downtown or shopping at around five o'clock, um, check out the Center North uh, parking lot area and you'll be able to um, see some live entertainment. Uh, that's that for now. Also, the Westwood Recreation Department is getting ready to announce their movie lineup for August. The first uh, movie will be the uh, uh, first week of August on Thursday night. And uh, we're starting out with an animated children's film called Trolls, um, but it's an all musical um, platform this year. So you'll be treated to also Yesterday and um, Mamma Mia and um, high School Musical, because we're all in this together. <laughs> Yay. That's exciting. And uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to these artists. In fact, I'm going to go there when we're done here today, because I think uh, the first one's at 5 o'clock. Yep. So I'm going to go down, and I'm going to watch the performers, and then I'm going to grab some food for my family for dinner at some place. I don't know which, which place yet, but I'll figure that out when I get there. <laughs> and it uh, should be fun. So, um, okay, so I'm going to uh, pass this over to Dr. Kathy German, who has graciously um, agreed to come and speak with us today and do a little chair yoga demonstration for us. So I hope everybody is sitting down, um, and I hope you're in a com comfortable place because uh, she's going to walk us through some exercises to help keep us not just mentally stimulated, but keep our bodies stimulated as well. So, Dr. German, can you uh, take it away and yeah. give can you hear me? Can you hear about me? your practice? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Yes. Hi, Martha. Hi, Martha. Anyway, well, thank you so much for having me, Lisa. I've known about this group for a while, and then I kind of forgot about it, and then one of our patients is asked to do this in her town in Fairlawn, Lisa, another Lisa, and she hooked us up, so yes. that's so great. Um, yeah, my husband and I are Westwood Family Chiropractic. We've been in Westwood for 35 years, hard to imagine, and hard to imagine that we don't know everyone, but there's always more, um, and we're just so excited. We love being in practice. We love what we do. Um, we've got three grown children, but we're a family practice. Um, we're on the corner of Old Hook and Kindercomac, across from Domino's, in the Beige Building. It used to be the Blue Brick Building, which you probably remember from that. So. Um, one of our favorite things to do is to reach out for the community and do all sorts of lectures and classes. And one of our very most popular things is yoga and chair yoga in particular. Um, so besides being a chiropractor, I'm also a yoga instructor for 20 years. And so I'm well versed in the poses and what to do. And one of the things that my patients appreciate is that I understand about taking care of your spine in exercise because we can hurt ourselves exercising even in a healthy way. So it's very important that you care for your spine because you need it for the rest of your life. And chair yoga is one of a, re one of a tool in your toolbox of caring for yourself. So chair yoga is a great thing because it's something that everyone can do no matter what age you are, no matter what physical condition you have. Um, if you're breathing, you can do chair yoga. So it's safe for everyone. Um, so what I'm going to do about like 12 to 15 minutes, right, Lisa, is I'm going to run you through some poses. I'm actually going to do them right here. I'm in my, the back of my office and I can see you doing them. If I can, I might tell you to move a little bit in a certain direction, but if I don't say anything, then just keep doing what you're doing. And the one thing I would say is if you feel stretching and pulling, that's good. If you feel sharp shooting pains, that's not so good. And then you should come out of the pose. And yoga, chair yoga, regular yoga, really any workout should be what's comfortable for you. So if something doesn't, feel, you're working at your own pace. Don't even look at anyone else on the screen. Don't even say, you know, I've been doing it a long time, so I'm flexible. You may not have that flexibility and it's okay. You work to where you're at and that's what I love about yoga. It's all about you 
and your body and where you can go from there, okay? So mostly in chair yoga, we're working on upper body, our arms, some neck, um, and we'll see what we have time to do, okay? So I'm gonna ask you all, I assume you're all sitting. It's best if you're not sitting on a bed or a sofa, I prefer a hard chair. Um, and I'm gonna ask you to just sit back in your chair for a minute. And so I have to move my camera once in a while, but put your palms flat down on your lap and lift your chest. So I'm gonna say this probably a hundred times in the next 10 minutes, lift your chest. And what I mean is lift this part, your sternum bone, lift it up. Remember when you were young and your mother said, don't be round shouldered, push your shoulders back. It never hurt, it never works to push your shoulders back. It works to lift this way. So think about lifting this way, you'll feel taller instantly. So start with your palms down on your lap and I'm just gonna ask you to close your eyes for a very short 30 seconds, but it's a good way to regroup. So close your eyes and breathe deeply in through your nose and blow all the air out. Breathe again deeply in and out and just try to relax your entire body, letting go of everything in your brain, relaxing your body, relaxing your muscles, feel your feet on the floor and just relax. Breathe deeply again, exhale and take your attention away from the front, away from your eyes, away from your forehead. Just quietly quiet your mind and go inside. And then gently open your eyes and move your fingers around and sit up tall in your chair. It's just really good to refocus. So we're gonna start by crossing our hands. So you're gonna cross your hands in front of you. Notice which thumb is on the top because you're gonna forget and then you're gonna turn your palms inside out and press them towards the camera. So my elbows are straight. If yours don't straighten, it's fine. Go to where you can, press them, and then on the inhale, lift them up. Good. So the idea is to get them as close to your ears as possible. If that doesn't work for you, you can keep them here. You can work to wherever you're at. But wherever you're at, work deeper. So see if you can straighten more or lengthen more. So push up towards the ceiling as if your palms were gonna stretch all the way up to your ceiling. There's always more to go. And I'm lifting from my lower ribs, okay? So my ribs are lifting up. If I were your yoga teacher, I would come behind you and hold your ribs and lift you up. So you can go more, deeper up. Breathe, inhale. And then exhale, bring your arms down straight in front of you and then uncross and do the other cross. So the other thumb is on top. We always do both sides and then turn your palms inside out and press your arms towards the camera. Straighten your elbows again, and then inhale and lift up. Really good. Now, some of us, some of you have shoulder or neck problems, and this is your flexibility rate, which is fine. If you're there, you can work on strength and straightening. And if you can't straighten, that's fine too. No matter what, higher up. Good. And now everyone, because you're sitting, come a little forward on your sit bones. You'll notice you might have slouched back. Come a little forward and then push the arms up higher, straighten the elbows. Breathe, higher. Good. Breathe, lift from here. Lift the chest up, push the hands up, and then inhale. Exhale and bring the arms straight down in front of you. Excellent. Okay. So move back a little. We're gonna bring the arms up again, but this time you're gonna go with your hands parallel. So bring them down at your sides and then lift your arms straight up. So I'm gonna bend so you can see. My hands are parallel to each other. Look up at your hands. Make sure there are no bends in your wrists. Straight up and lift higher. So straighten your elbows and lift higher. And now you're gonna take your right hand and bring it under your left arm, right where your arm bone meets your armpit and stretch it up. You didn't know it could go higher, did you? You thought it was all the way up, all the way up. And then bring the right arm back up and breathe. Take the left arm, hook it under that right, right where your arm bone meets your armpit and lift up higher. So again, you can get higher from the rib and then bring both arms up and breathe. And now I'm gonna have you look up at your hands and lift your chest a little bit when you look up. And then without disturbing your chest, just bring your head forward and lift up higher, inhale, exhale, bring your arms straight down, excellent. So most of us live most of our days like this, okay? Whether we're on the computer, on our phone, reading, taking care of young children, and as we age and we become more like this, the spine starts curving forward and it's not okay. That's not healthy, 
That's what decreases your lifespan and decreases your ability to be healthy. Your posture is important, so we want the chest lifted at all times, okay? All right, so the next pose we're gonna do, just keep moving my camera, is a spinal twist. This is very safe for your spine, okay? So um, watch for a minute. I'm gonna separate my feet about six, feet, six inches apart. Take one hand over my thigh and bring the other hand behind my chair. Now I'm in a bridge chair, so my hand is here, but you could put it on the seat of the chair, wherever you can. Yeah, Lisa, wherever you can reach. So let's all start in the beginning facing forward. So I do opposite of you. I want you to take your right hand and bring it over your left thigh. Then bring your left hand behind you. Come forward if you have to on the chair. And then we're gonna inhale, lift, lift your chest. And on the exhale, you're gonna turn towards that side, okay, where your arm. You're gonna use your arm. You can bend your elbow to turn your spine. So you're really safe, even if you have low back issues, because you're seated. So on spinal twist, on the inhale, we lift our chest. And on the exhale, we turn deeper into the pose. You can also use your back hand to press down on the seat of the chair to turn you. So inhale, lift. Exhale, turn deeper. And then release the pose and come back to center. So just watch for a minute when we do the other side, the front arm can be bent, but as I was saying, you breathe and you get taller and then you exhale and you turn. So as you inhale, the spine lengthens and then you have more space to turn, okay? And this is working your abdominals, your side ribs. So go ahead, left hand over your right thigh, inhale, lift your chest, exhale, turn. Okay to bend that left elbow. Inhale, lift. Exhale, turn deeper into the pose and deeper into the pose. Good. And then release and come back to center. Excellent. So sit back in your chair, way back. Put your hands on the sides of your chair, lift your chest. So I can't see your legs, so I'm gonna have to trust you that you're gonna do the best you can. Lift your right knee, your right lower leg, just lift it straight up. So those of you who have knee issues and say, I can't do squats, I can't do this, you can do this. And this puts no weight on your knee. Tighten the entire muscle around that thigh into the bone. Think of the bone as a magnet and pull that muscle in. Sit tall and push through the sole of your foot like you're gonna push it all the way to your camera. Good, and then drop that down and then switch to your second leg. So lower leg lifts, you have a straight leg. It's very visual. I like to think that I'm pushing the, all the way to the wall on the other side of the room. Lengthen that leg, tighten the thigh, lift the chest, and then bring the leg down. And now you probably know what's happening. We're gonna bring both legs together. So bring the inside edges of your knees together, nice and tight, pull your legs in, and then lift both legs, press through the soles of your feet, lift your chest, and now we're gonna put two pieces together. You're gonna to take your arms and lift them straight up. If this is challenging, keep one leg bent and lift. This is called Dandasana. This is staff pose. Lift higher with your arms. Tighten your thigh muscles into the bone. Bring the upper arms to your ears. Stretch through your fingers. And if you can, look up at your fingers. Stretch higher up, push through the soles of your feet, and then bring your head back to center. Bend your legs down and bring your arms down. Excellent. So time goes so fast when you do chair yoga, but I want you to start thinking that I can do this. I can do this in the middle of work if I'm working at home. I can do this anytime, one or two poses, okay? So a couple more things. We're gonna bring our arms out to the side. This is eagle arms. And we're gonna inhale. On the exhale, cross your right arm over your left. So I'm just doing an X as high up past your elbows as possible is best, but if you can only go here, you go here. Then I'm gonna ask you to bend your elbows up so the backs of your hands are together. For some of us, it's a challenge. If your hands are here, they're here, okay? And then if you have access to that, you're gonna put your palms together. So like your pinky and your thumb are gonna hook, but it's fine to be here. You all look really good. It's fine if you have to clasp your fists. You go to where you can, work at your own ability. No matter where your hands are, Lift your elbows off your chest. Yes, and breathe. And then I'm gonna go sideways so that my forearms aren't in my face. I'm gonna pull them away from my face. And then we're gonna pull our shoulders away from our ears. So if my shoulders are coming up, I'm gonna pull them down. 
You'll feel a massage in your upper trapezius. Yeah, pull down, forearms away, chest lifted. Good, and we're gonna inhale, uncross the arms, bring them way out, stretch through your fingers, and now you're gonna cross your other arm on top. So it should be your left arm, but whatever one you did before is opposite. Cross, cross the palms if you can, pull the elbows away from the chest, pull the shoulders down, and pull the forearms away from the face. Good, and breathe. And exhale. Shoulders away again so that you feel like someone's massaging your upper trapezius muscles. And then inhale. And exhale, release the arms out to the side. And now you're gonna lead, bring your palms up. Try to leave your arms out. Bring them back a little bit behind the arm socket. And then we're gonna bring our arms up and connect your thumbs. This will be almost our last pose. So connect your thumbs and then pull the fingers away from each other. So everyone come forward on your sit bones. Open your arms, make believe like that first pose that your hand is pulling your arm up. Lengthen your arms up. Spread your fingers wide, pull the thumbs apart. Lift higher. Come forward on your sit bones so you're not slouching back. Forward, good, breathe. And then switch the cross. So other thumb, it's gonna feel awkward this way. Yeah, really good. Straight your elbows any amount, bring your arms up, lift higher. You feel your shoulder blades going together in the back. Stretch the fingers, pinkies separate from each other. All the skin on the palm of your hands are spreading. Breathe, breathe deeply, breathe fully. And then separate the arms out to the side and bring them down. Good. Okay, so and that was 15 minutes. That's how fast it was, right? And I could go on for a while, but I have to get back to my patients. But before, before we end, we're gonna just go out the way we came in, okay? So before you start talking to anyone or looking around your space, close your eyes again. Close your eyes again. Relax your palms on your thighs. Lift your chest. Breathe deeply and breathe fully. Relax your whole body and feel the difference. There's always a difference, even with 12 minutes of yoga. There's a difference in the amount of energy and oxygen in your body. Every cell is more vibrant. Your muscles are relaxed. Your brain is relaxed. Let the whole body go. Feel the backs of your legs on the seat of your chair. Relax your face. Quiet your brain. Feel the relaxation and be grateful for your body and for that small amount of work that brought more energy, more life, more vitality to every cell. So slowly wiggle your fingers and your toes and then gently and quietly open your eyes but keep your mind relaxed. And then I'll bring my hands in the front of my heart and cup my head and I'll say, thank you for having me here. Thank you so much, Dr. German. It's fun. I'm anytime you want. I'm usually available, so I would be happy to do it. And I just want you to know, it's a, everyone can do yoga. And if you can't remember, you could look something up online. But everything is helpful in this day and age. Every little behavior helps something else. So don't ever think it's all or nothing. If I can't go to 16 classes a month, it just doesn't work that way. Do something for your body, and you just did so. That's wonderful. I feel like I'm taller already. Yeah, well, people do say that, yeah. Because you I love what you say about the sternum, too. Using your sternum rather than thinking about pulling your shoulders back. Because and a wise yoga teacher said once, make believe you have eyes here and you want them to look at the ceiling. So Love that. I love that. Anyway, I would stay, but I do have office hours, so I'm going to hop off. But thank you all. Contact me if you have a question. And Lisa, we'll be in touch. How's that? That sounds wonderful. Thank you so, so very much. And the Germans are going to do a program at the library August 4th. Yes, and I think on the 11th, too. So we'll have and to. the 11th. I don't, I don't have it on the calendar yet, I think. But yeah, two, two visits you're doing, different, different things. Different things. Uh, so that, that's good to know, some programs for that. Thank you all so much. Enjoy you the rest of your time. Thank you. So before we move any further along, we're going to do another little fun question. So um, let's see how many of you know this. And again, if you're joining us on Facebook Live, you will not see these questions, um, but we'll, we'll share them with you. So the question is, who was the first mayor of Westwood? 
Was it Bogert, Demarest, Westervelt, or Berkner? Ah, so far it looks like we're not too sure. We're getting a variety of answers here. You can lock in your votes. <laughs> and uh, we'll give you like a few more seconds here. We've got nine votes. We've got 11 votes out of 13. A couple people haven't voted. That's okay if you haven't voted. All right, so let's see how all of you did. Let's see how much you know about your mayoral history. Yes, Bogart was the first mayor of Westwood. How many years ago? You can unmute yourselves. How many years ago? What did we do? Bogart was the first mayor? Bogart was. He was? Oh. <laughs> I don't know that Demarest and Westervelt were mayors, but their names are pretty yeah. around here. Um, okay, so one more, and then we're going to have a little entertainment here. So let's see if you know the answer to this question. The first Bank of Westwood is now in which building? The Bank of America building, Pliables, Starbucks, or Westwood Art Gallery? What do you think? The very first Bank of New York. It was called the first Bank of Westwood. I feel like you should do the Jeopardy music. Dum, 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 dum. And for you watching on Facebook, you can even put it in the comments. What do you think it is? Is it the Bank of America building? Is it where the Pliables now is? Is it where Starbucks is? Or the Westwood Art Gallery? Okay. 11 out of 13 of you have voted. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. And let's see how you did. Was close that was close but yes the correct answer is pliables which was just recently perry and jewelers for many many years but that was the original bank okay so we'll so you get a prize for getting them all right you don't get any prize. you get prizes your prizes you get to uh, check out a book from the library oh that's fantastic for free yes yes yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Gary, are you ready to entertain us? Yes, I am. You have to. So, um, so we've invited Gary Van Meert, and I, um, I was introduced to him by Chrissy Roberts, who you guys might remember if you were on our last Sim a month ago. Um, performers all kind of know each other, which is wonderful. And she recommended Gary highly, and uh, I checked out some of his his work on YouTube. Um, a, a, a fascinating um, singer, performer, uh, gospel, blues, country. Um, Gary, I don't want to take away your thunder, so I'm going to let you introduce yourself and talk about your music, and then he's going to share a couple of songs with us. Okay, thank you, Lisa. My name is Gary Van Meert. I'm a singer, songwriter, musician, and entertainer who specializes in American roots music. And I perform specifically three genres of music, blues, country, and gospel. And what I'm going to do today is perform one song from each genre for you. So the first song I'm going to do is uh, a country song. It's by a guy you probably all know and love. His name is Mr. Johnny Cash. And the song is called Folsom Prison Blues. Of a train a coming, it's rolling round the bend. I ain't seen the sunshine since I don't know when. I'm stuck in Folsom Prison, and time keeps dragging by. And when I hear that train a coming, I hang my head and cry. Just a baby, my mom she told me, son, always be a good boy, don't ever play with guns. But I shot a man in Reno just to watch him die. And when I feel that train a coming, I hang my head and cry. Beth's rich folks eating fancy dining cars, drinking lots of coffee, 
smoking big cigars, but I knew I had it coming. I know I can't be free. But those people keep a moving. That's what's killing me. That railroad train was mine Then I'd take it on a little Further down the line Far from Folsom Prison That's where I want to stay And I'd let that lonesome whistle Blow my blues away Hear the train that come in Rolling round the bend I ain't seen the sunshine Since I don't know when I'm stuck in Folsom Prison And time keeps dragging by And when I hear that train coming I hang my head and cry Thank you, thank you. Oh, excellent. We're all clapping, but we're muted, so you can't hear us clapping for you. That's great. <laughs> Roseanne, I love your uh, son dancing there in the background. We got to, you know. I know, I saw some dances. Lisa, you looked like you wanted to dance. I wanted to dance, so bad. I love that song. How did you know? That's one of my favorite Johnny Cash songs. Love Johnny Cash, so wonderful, wonderful selection. Thank you so much. So uh, for my next Please. song, I'm going to do a blues song. And uh, awesome. this song was written by a guy from New Orleans called Smiley Lewis. And some of you may know it because it was covered by Elvis Presley. And it's called One Night. One night with you is what I meant praying for. That we two could plan Make my dreams come true Just call my name And I'll be right by your side I need your sweet helping hand My love's too strong Always lived a very quiet life. I ain't never did no wrong. Now I know this very quiet life. It's been too lonely to, been too lonely to, been too lonely too long. One night with you. The things that we two could plan Make the earth stand still Always lived very quiet life I never did no wrong Now I know dreams come true would make my dreams come true yay 
Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Everybody unmute yourself so you can all clap. <laughs> that was fabulous, Gary. Fabulous. I love I was singing harmony with you. You couldn't hear it, but and it's just as well. But <laughs> that was that was really good. So Gary is gonna sing a couple more songs for us a little bit later in the program. So it's it's uh we're about halfway in, in right now. So wanna shift gears a little bit and what better time than to do another poll, okay? So let me just pull up another poll for us and see, uh, not a poll, but a little trivia question. Let's, this is we're gonna, where we're going to like separate the wheat from the chaff, as they say. And let's see how well you guys do with this question. And again, if you're watching on Facebook, you won't see it on the screen, but I will say what the options are. So the question is, who is the current Westwood Borough Administrator? Is it Karen Hughes, Sharon Blail, Gary Buckheister, Ben Kazmarski? or Armand Marini. So lock in your votes. Who do you think our current borough administrator is here in Westwood? All right, I see a lot of you are getting it. We've got nine votes so far. Even if you don't know, just guess. Take a random guess. So is it Karen Hughes? Is it Sharon Blail? Is it Gary Buckeister? Is it Ben Kismarski? Or is it Armand Marini? All right. 10 more seconds. Yeah? We got nine of you who have voted. Gary, I, I take it you're not voting since you're not a Westwood resident. <laughs> but you can, you can. Okay, so let's see how everybody did. Yay! It looks like most of you got it. 89% or eight of you said Ben Kesmarski. That is true. He is the borough administrator. Um, okay, so. It works. Yes, yes. <laughs> hey, Rob, good to see you there. Um, so, Martha, I'm going to turn it over to you for a few minutes to talk about all the wonderful things that are going on at the library and uh, share some information with us that uh, I, I know you've been doing a wonderful job this summer, especially during this whole pandemic, of keeping lines of communication open and keeping things available for people. And now I understand you're doing the door side service. And even though we can't go into the lobby yet to uh, to the library, you've been doing a lot of wonderful things uh, online and elsewhere. So go ahead and share a little bit about what's happening at the library. Thank you, Lisa. Thanks for inviting me. And I'm also going to say that Denise is on here as well. Um, She's, you know, the children's librarian, and she's been doing a wonderful job with all the children's programming over the summer. So we have uh, quite, a, I, we have so much going on. I have to look at our website because I can't, I can't <laughs> even remember everything that we have. Um, but we have a really great sort of reading program uh, for kids, and Denise, um, I'm going to let her talk about that in a minute. So I'll just cover the adult, uh, adult things. Um, like you said, we do. We are open for door side delivery, so that means you can interlibrary loan anything you want, uh, anything from our library, anything from any other library, and you can request it, and we can give it to you know, can check it out to you, um, and put it out into the vestibule area. We're open every day, ten to five, and Monday evenings till eight. Um, we can help you pick things out, and. Uh, in addition, tomorrow we're going to do a pop-up library outside. So we're going to bring some of the materials outside so people can do a little browsing. Um, so that should kind of satisfy that. We also have computers to loan. So if somebody needs a computer that they need access, they can borrow a computer for a week uh, at a time. We have several laptops that we're loaning out. And we also uh, can handle all the printing, scanning, faxing, all of that. Um, we've done a lot of printing for people uh, while we've been shut down because you can connect to our printer from outside in the parking lot. Uh, so you can just send things to the printer and then we hand it outside or you can ask us to print it for you and we can do that. Um, also, Janet is a notary, so she's been handling notary uh, appointments as well. Um, then we have a ton of adult programs. Adult, all of you guys should be registered for the Adult Summer Reading Program. I hope you all are because there are prizes to be given away and all the prizes have been purchased by the Friends of the Library and they're all from uh, the different local businesses and stores. So you are supporting local business by participating in the summer reading program. You just sign up and register your books that you've been reading and you are qualifying for a, a grand prize, which should be 
um, pretty, pretty good. A dinner out, um, some other things. So I'm going to go look for all your names. Um, and then we have, uh, for teen, that's for teens and then of course for children's, which Denise is going to take over and talk about. But we also have a ton of programs happening for adults that you might be interested in. So if you go to the library website, um, you know, I, as I said, Mrs. Um, Kathy and Jet German are going to be uh, at the library twice in August to, um, oh yeah, so you can click on the adult section there, adult, uh, yep. yeah. So just a couple of things. We have uh, Kathy and Jet will be there at the library to do um, some, oh, not the uh, online book group, but just the adult page. Yeah, just right there. And you can scroll down. Oh, I see you have Just Mercy. Yeah, so that's just some resources there. But we have yoga and um, yeah, there's Kathy uh, and Jet. And then we also were doing a book discussion on um, the new Jim Crow, which had like 200 holds on that book recently. As you know, a lot of the of these kinds of books are very, very popular and right now and rightly so. And we had a, a, a two part discussion that we're hosting. We had the first part in July and our second part is coming up August 10th. And uh, Lisa, you were part of that. I thought it was great. It was really, really um, just a great way to study a book, you know, to read it and then have discussion with other community members. Um, it was, I thought it was really excellent. It really was. It was fascinating. And, and I think that it was a small group, but it was some really great conversation. And the leader of it was just a fabulous yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So he's going to come back on August 10th and you don't have to have, you, you don't have to have come to the first meeting to go to the second meeting. You can participate in the second one as well. Uh, we also have another book that we're going to be doing called The Vanishing Half. And that one too is a bestseller right now. And we're able to provide it on Libby. Um, so everyone can have access to it. Um, this one is a it's a, it's a really uh, hot book right now. So you can you can get it on Libby, and we're going to have a discussion on, uh, of that in August also on the thirteenth. I'm very excited. It's a, it's an excellent book. Um, uh, she's a young writer. It's her second novel, and she's just hitting it out of the ballpark. It's really it's really great. Um, and then we also have some genealogy programs. Uh, Ancestry.com has been a very popular database uh, that we can provide access to now and at home access. And so we've had some programs for that. And also um, Neighbors Helping Neighbors, which is a job support group, has been offering um, some presentations on job skills and job help and job assistance. And they have been really well attended online. And we've had one uh, every couple of weeks. We just had one last night that had like over 40 people on it. Um, and we have another one coming up in August and more in September. So you definitely want to check those out. And then our own Roger Anthony is coming in September to talk to do an armchair travel to Ethiopia. And if you've never come to a program by Roger Anthony, you are missing out because he is a great uh, moderator for a discussion. He's a, he's a, he, um, uh, and, um, they, they've traveled wildly, wildly, widely, widely, and they give a great presentation. So, um, that's something to look forward to in September. Um, so I think I'm talking too much. There's, there's just a lot happening. I bet they try of travel wildly as well as yeah. I feel like that was not a, <laughs> that was not a mistake when I said that wildly first. Wildly yep. and widely. Yeah, knowing Roger, I'm sure there's been a lot of wild travels. Yes, uh, they really, I've been to their travel presentations and they're excellent. Um, and then I would let Denise uh, talk about children's because that has been a very robust program and that's on the summer reading, I think. Uh, yes. like to um, oh, oh, just one last thing though for me. The One Book Westwood, which is typically a middle grade reader but has uh, attraction for adults as well. That book, uh, Everything on a Waffle, is an excellent book, and that's going to have a program on August 13th, and we have multiple copies of that book available. It's a very fast read, but I have to say, even for an adult, it's a really, a, a really wonderful read. Uh, it's, you know, it's fast, but it's very powerful. This writer is, she's just, a, she's just a great writer, no matter what level. Um, it's a very poignant story. It's very uh, appropriate to today, a very... Um, wonderful hopeful story but uh has a lot to do with what's happening today and and, and for westwood um so it'd be great to talk with you all about it and she's going to be coming in uh into our program on august 13th 
the, the, the uh, writer will be coming in. Wonderful. Zoom, on Zoom. So I'm, I'm really super excited about that because I really like this author for a long time. Great. Thank you. And Denise, do you want to talk about children's programming? Sure. I'll just be quick about uh, with my end. Um, the uh, children's uh, summer reading program is just doing phenomenally. We have already over uh, 110 children registered so far. Um, we're hoping to get those numbers uh, a little higher, but I'm thrilled that we have uh, as many uh, as we do. And they've already collectively read over 2,000 books. Um, which is exciting. Yep. And we're only halfway through the program. So we have a few more weeks and uh, we're hoping to um, see those numbers go up even more. Um, this year, the uh, summer reading program is just, um, it's really um, diverse in that we've uh, been able uh, under Martha's direction, go and use the uh, summer reading incentive prizes um, uh, with the help of the local businesses. And uh, that's been really a nice incentive for the kids kids to, you know, change the, the, the prize every week. It's not just some little tchotchke thing. They can really go out into the community and um, they get to know the businesses in town and they know that they're, they're um, supporting the, the local businesses. So that's been um, exciting um, for us to see. Um, and and we're, we're proud to support the local businesses in town uh, with the program. Um, we've had lots of different age groups participating in as, you, as we do every summer, but they're participating more. I thought it would be less because it's online, but it really isn't. <laughs> um, to my surprise, I have debate club that's full. We have, I mean, I can't even get it's all kinds of STEM programs that are constantly um, highly and uh, well attended. The, mm -hmm. the uh, pre-recorded story times, my numbers are through the roof at like 200 visitors a pop. And I feel like I'm immortalized now on, you know, uh, <laughs> on the website on my recordings, but they're doing really well. Um, and even the rest of this month as August starts to taper down uh, we still have programs all the way to um, through the th uh, third week in August uh, for, for kids to do. And it takes them not only uh, um, online, but they ha we have lots of activities for them to do outside. So, you know, they can go, you know, take us a, a picture of themselves where their favorite place to read is and send it to us. And then they earn raffle tickets. So they can earn raffle tickets by reading and by doing a, a variety of activities that we have set up on the website. Um, and then they can uh, complete those and, and, and earn them. And then there's... Um, uh, a whole bunch of other options that they have on the summer reading page. So everyone is taking full advantage of it, and I'm really uh, happy to see that. Um, so that's the program. We're doing really well. Uh, thank, thank you, Denise. I, wanted to, mm. oh, I forgot to say something about those um, jigsaw puzzles. Oh, yeah. So the Friends of the Library and Celebrate Westwood um, have a, a, a little fundraiser for, to support lo these local businesses and, and residents. And um, it's in the form of a jigsaw puzzle sale. So there's five uh, Westwood buildings that are j jigsaw puzzles that you can buy. And that's through the, through the library website. Um, we, we, I've got the order in, we've got the puzzles coming. Um, we've gotten several orders already, but you can you know, place your orders. And I would do that because we have limited quantities. Uh, and you can, you can look, at, at, look at them on the website. Thank you, Martha, and thank you for sharing everything about the library. I would just tell you, we just did a, a COVID-19 survey to see how it's impacting the lives of our older residents. And the one thing that came through loud and clear as to what people miss the most since the pandemic is the library. Yeah. It's going into the library. So yeah. that you've been able to do as much as you have means that people can still stay connected and still have the wonderful resources but I know they're all looking forward to that day when they can just come inside and say hello and, and be able to sit and, and read a book and enjoy, uh, you know, the, the, the connection. So um, we look forward to that day again. But in the meantime, kudos to you and your staff for all the wonderful work that you've been doing to keep the town connected and, and keep people reading. It's, it's really wonderful. So thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're going to do another poll before we do some more music from Gary. We've got just a few minutes left. This is just going to be a really quick one. Um, I'm going to, we, we have a lot of questions, so I'm going to skip through and just do something uh, related to, let's see how much you know about um, seniors in our town. So this is, this is a, a little bit of a tougher question, but it's asking 
According to the 2010 census, and by the way, everybody should have filled out their 2020 census by now. If not, get on it. Um, what percentage of Westwood's population is 65 or older? So you've got a few choices here, 17, 21, 13, or 25. What do you think the right answer is? Is it 17%, 21%, 13, or 25? Now this is in 2010. Obviously that was 10 years ago. But what are you thinking? Okay, so most people have voted. Any other guesses here? All right, so I'm going to show you the results. And we had um, three of you said 17, five of you said 21. That was the biggest number. One said 13 and two said 25. The actual answer is 17%. So the first choice. Hey, <laughs> Denise, did you get it? You were yeah. a little. <laughs> yeah. um, so, yes, it was 17%. However, however, by the year 2025, that's only five years from now, that figure is anticipated to be 25%. So we are aging, so from 17 to 25% in 10 years. Okay, Gary, back to the fun and the entertainment. I'm going to turn it over to you to entertain us with two more songs. And then before, uh, once Gary's done, I'll just close it out with a couple more little announcements and, um, and then say goodbye to everybody. So go ahead and take it away, uh, Gary. And if you have unmuted yourself, I would just ask that you that everybody else mute themselves at this time. Thank you. Okay, as promised, I said I would do one song from each genre. This is a gospel song. It's probably the most popular gospel song. It was written about a hundred years ago. It originally was a children's gospel song but it was co-opted by the civil rights movement and it became an anthem. So, you know, you all can sing along even though you're muted. It's called This Little Light of Mine. This little light of
<laughs> I was singing with you. I interrupted your song like I didn't realize you were still going. I apologize for that. That's all right. It was actually well timed. <laughs> so, right. so, uh, if anybody's interested in the in the chat section, I put all my links so you could check out uh, what I'm up to. Uh, I'm gonna my for my last song. I'm gonna do an original song, something I wrote a couple of years ago, and it's going to be on my new album, which is coming out in a few months. And this is a, a song of gratitude, and it's called Privilege.
to know all of you. Well, Gary, it was a privilege for you to come and perform for us and for us to be blessed by your musical talent. I, I, speaking for myself here, really, really enjoyed it. And I could tell from looking at the smiling faces of your audience that they did as well. Um, so thank you. Thank you very much for coming in and sharing that gift with us. I really do appreciate it. Well, thank you. The privilege was all mine. And and we and and as you mentioned in the chat, we shared your information. We've also shared it on our Facebook page. So if you're watching this live on Facebook, you can see it right in the comments section as well. That you can see the links for Gary's YouTube channel, um, and uh, we also have some information there about the the, the library as well. Um, one last thing that I'll just share with everybody is that uh, a little bit of a of good news here, um, and that is that. Uh, the Westwood for All Ages initiative uh, recently received uh, word that we are being extended for two more years. So, yay! yay. <laughs> so, we are thrilled that the Henry and Marilyn Taub Foundation saw fit to give us two more years of additional funding uh, to expand our, our reach here in Westwood and to do more to help Westwood become a age-friendly community. So. Uh, we're going to be honing in on working with the borough on transportation this year and also technology. So we've been sort of priming the pump with doing these social connection happy hours, but we're going to be looking for more ways to be able to offer technology to our older residents and by way of training and connectivity and make it something that isn't uh, quite so scary or overwhelming. Um, also, I had mentioned before that we did a survey, and I know probably everybody who's on this call probably filled out that survey not too long ago about how COVID-19 has impacted their lives. So we got a little over, uh, I think like 131 responses. So I'm just sharing my screen here. If you want to see the results of that, you can go to our website, westwoodforallages.org, and you'll notice here right on the main screen the results of our community survey on the impact of COVID-19. So if you click on that, you'll see a presentation that's a PowerPoint that's on a Google, uh, a shared Google document. So uh, I'm not going to go through it, but you can certainly look through it um, in your own time and, and kind of see each question by question how things were scored. Um, and uh, not surprisingly, one of the main things is that uh, social isolation has been a challenge, you know, social connection. So that's one of the reasons why we wanted to do these happy hours. We'll continue to do them on a monthly basis through the remainder of the year um, until we can all get together again in person. We'll continue to do these. So if you have ideas for topics that you'd like to have covered, if there are speakers here in Westwood that you would like to invite to come and speak with us, um, please please forward that along to, to let us know. You can uh, let us know by email at ww for all ages at gmail.com and the four is the number four or on our Facebook page or if you know me personally you can certainly just send me a text or give me a call. Um, we do uh, also we're also going to have entertainment on each one of these as well so if there are people that are in your world that are entertainers that you think might be interested in performing uh, please send them along to us as well. Um, with that, are there any, anybody want to unmute themselves and say any few words or? Uh, I just have a question. Yes, please. How late is the entertainment this evening? Uh, five to seven. Seven, okay. Yeah, Thank so you. Go, go check it out. And uh, there's going to be more uh, tomorrow and Saturday as well. And I've seen the roster. There's some really great things lined up. So. And then don't forget the community band uh, will be in the bandstand on Sunday as well. Yeah. And uh, Roseanne, you want to talk about the um, movies, the summer movies? Um, yeah. So the, um, the summer movies will be starting um, in August, uh, Thursdays in August. Um, we do need to have Westwood residents RSVP because we have to limit to about 300 uh, people on the lawn. Um, we're showing an all musical program this year. So it'll be uh, an animated um, uh, children's um, film called 
trolls. You may have heard of it. And then we're going to go to um, uh, Yesterday, which is a film about a man who gets an accident, oh, cool. wakes up, and no one knows who the Beatles are. And then Mamma Mia, and um, a tween favorite high school musical. We're all in this together. So. That those, starts in August. Yeah. those are great selections. I can't wait to see Mamma Mia. That's one of my <laughs> favorites. And I've heard wonderful things about trolls. I, so even though I'm a little kid, I'm going to have to borrow somebody else's kid and go. <laughs> yeah, and Celebrate Westwood may have a little special treat. In that one, so we'll see what happens. Very nice. Very nice. Well, um, it's been a pleasure seeing all of you again and uh, being able to see your smiling faces. And I appreciate your time. And for those of you, again, watching on Facebook Live, uh, I, I appreciate that you took a little time to, to pop in and see us. Um, because it's on Facebook Live, it'll be there indefinitely. So um, you can always go back and watch it if you like. We have recorded this one as well that we'll have on our YouTube page and on our website. So thank you all once again for coming. Have a wonderful afternoon. Enjoy and get out into town. Enjoy the, the arts and be well. Until Thanks. we see you. Bye -bye. And thanks for putting this together, Lisa. Yes. You're very welcome. It was my pleasure. Take care, everyone. Bye.